here in order to account for that 170 difference. Now, ultimately that 170 difference is going to be split between the capital accounts. But I'm first going to record it as we generally would record it in a normal transaction. And that is that we would have a gain or loss on the transaction. In this case, we have a gain. So the gain represented by, by brackets. If we have a loss, it would be it would be a debit balance. If we have a gain, it's going to be a credit balance. We're going to have a gain here because, of course, the cash was bigger than <laughs> the inventory was on the books for. So that's going to go to this account, gain or loss. I'm going to copy that on the sale, copy that, put that in J6, right click and paste it one, two, three. And then I'm going to call this the plug formula. I could just type it in there. It's going to be a credit of 170, but I'm going to do it with what I call a plug formula. And that's going to be instead of equals, it's going to be the negative SUM of the 700. I highlight this whole square. So it's going to be the 700 minus the 530. Then we're going to say that, take that and multiply it times negative one, meaning flip the sign so that we have 170. We can also see it this way. If I add up these two now, we have the 700 on the credit side, 700 on the debit side. If we were to take the debits minus the credits, they add up to zero. All right, let's post this out and see if it does what we think it should do. And of course, what do we think it should do? The cash should go up, the inventory should go to zero, and then we're gonna post the difference to the gain, which will have an effect on net income. Okay, so we're gonna go to the P4 and we're gonna post this we're going to see what happens from the beginning to the ending balance in this section. So we're going to say this equals and point to this 700,000. That's a debit. This is a debit. It's going to make the debits go up in the debit direction and put us out of balance by the 700. Then we're going to go to P5. We're in P5. We're going to say equals point to the 530. This is a debit. That's a credit. They are opposites. Therefore, this is going to go down to zero. And then we'll, we're out of bounds by the 170, which will be the gain or loss. So we're going to go to P12 and we're going to say equals and point to this 170, which is a gain. And that will increase this to 170, put us back in balance, put net income up. Net income is going up and that, rep that is represented by a credit. Credits are kind of like good on the income statement, meaning it's a gain, not a loss. Now, the next step on this is that, remember over here, we allocated this information to the capital accounts. So now this is kind of like the closing process we're gonna talk about here. And we're instead of closing it out to the income summary and whatnot, we're just gonna close this gain now out to the capital accounts here in accordance to their profit sharing here. So we're gonna close this gain out. So this gain has a credit we need to make it go to zero. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a debit. So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna right click and copy that. Skip a line for a new journal entry, the debit will go on top, so we'll put that right here in cell J8. Right click and paste, one, two, three. All right, the debit is going to be for 170,000. That's what we need to make this go to zero. Then we're gonna need a credit of 170. What are we gonna credit? The capital accounts. We're going to credit the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing percentage over here. So we're going to have to copy these. I'm going to copy these capital accounts. And of course, what is that going to do to the capital accounts? It's going to increase the capital accounts. We're going to credit them, making them go up because we're going to do the same thing to them, which makes sense because this is, of course, a gain, which will increase the amount that is owed to the owners being the capital accounts. So we will copy these, I highlight all three of them, highlight all three, right click and copy. And I'm gonna paste them right here. Paste them in J9, right click and paste one, two, three. We're in the credit side. Now we could just list these numbers, the 85, the, the 56, the 28, 33. I'm gonna recalculate them just so we can see the calculation one more time. So the calculation would be, I'm gonna say a negative to make it a credit and then point to this 170. We need that 170 to be allocated times, in the, in, in the case of the case capital count, times this 50% and enter. So it's the 170 times that 50, and then I'm gonna do the same for C, negative instead of equals to make it a bracketed number, negative of this 170 times, and then I'm gonna to point to this point, uh, this 33.33 and enter. And once again, note that that number will be slightly different if we did it in a calculator. 
So we want to point to this cell because that cell really has 2 over 3 plus 2 plus 1, 2 over 6, not 33.33 because it's really 33.33333. So then we're going to be down here in L11 and we're going to say negative and point to the 170 times and then uh, pointing to this 16.67 for M. And let's see if that did what we think it should. Do the credits add up to the debits? The credits add up to 170, which equals the debits. That's good. If we highlight all of them, the debits and the credits. That means then that the debits minus the credits are now zero, which that's good. That means that they're equal. Okay, so let's post this out then. We're going to post the gain to the gain. So we're going to post the gain down here. We're going to post it to the blue area. There's already something in there. Therefore, what we're going to do is double click on that and go to the end of it. I can see, of course, that this gain account is there. I'm going to go to the end. I'm always going to select plus when we post to this trial balance section. Then we'll post this 170. That's a credit. This is a debit. Those are opposites. Going to make this go down to zero, which is what we wanted to happen. Now we're out of balance here. We're then going to post these to the capital counts, which will increase the capital counts. We'll start off with K's capital count. Here's K's capital count. Here's what we're going to post it in cell P7 equals and we're going to post this 85 credit that's a credit this is a credit it's going to make the credit go up in the credit direction then we're going to go to p8 same thing we're going to say this equals and we're going to post this c's capital account and post the number 56667 that's a credit this is a credit it's going to make the credit go up in the credit direction and then we're going to do this one more time we've got m's the last one m is here we're going to post it to the blue section in p9 we're going to say this equals point to the 28333 that'll bring the capital count up and put us back in balance so now we've basically closed out net income and posted it to the capital count these are our new capital count balances represented in the trial balance and these are the capital count balances represent in our little uh, worksheet over here so now we've sold the inventory the next step again before we start paying off the capital account balances we probably want to pay off the liabilities first. So we'd like to pay off the third parties, then we'll be left with just cash and capital accounts, and we'll just be able to pay off the capital accounts at that point. So now we, we would like to pay off the accounts payable. So I'm gonna do that with the worksheet first. And again, some people like the worksheet better. Some people like to, to think about it in terms of the trial balance. We'll look at it in both these ways. But if we look at this worksheet, we see that we have 240 in terms of payables. We're gonna pay that off. That needs to go to zero. So I'm gonna say this is gonna go down by 240. We're gonna pay off the liabilities. What are we gonna pay it with? We're gonna pay it with cash. So we're gonna go over to the cash here and we're gonna say this is gonna go down by 240. So there we have this. And notice what we're looking at. We're just looking at this line. This is where we're at. I'm not worried about any of this stuff up here. That's, hit, that's in the past. We're on this balance. We're gonna record this activity and then we'll bring the new balance down here that's not a shoe or anything it's a, the new balance that we have on our worksheet okay so that means that the cash is going to go down from the 8825 minus the 240 so let's do that this equals the 8825 and i'm going to say plus the 240 why because we put the 240 in here or i did as a negative number therefore it's going to be this plus a negative number. And if that's confusing, just note that obviously if we went the wrong way, if I delete that and I said this equals this minus the 240, then it's gonna come up to something that doesn't make any sense. Well, I went up, I wanted it to go down. So that means, well, we went the wrong way. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna say this equals the 8825 plus the negative that's in there, 240. And that will make it go down and say, ah, that looks, that looks reasonable because it went from, it went down, which is what we wanted. So then we're going to go over here and do the same thing. There's not any inventory at this time. We know that the account's payable, same thing. So liability went from here plus this number, which is a negative, and therefore it took it down. There will be no effect on the capital account. So we're just going to bring down the capital accounts. Capital account still is this number. For K, the capital count still is this number for C, and the capital count for M is still this number of the 195333. So there we have this. Let's do that same information in terms of 
the uh, trial balance and a uh, journal entry. So note, we're gonna do the same thing. Again, a lot of people like me like to, would rather think through this in terms of a trial balance rather than the worksheet because we can see here what, what we're gonna have happen and go through basically our list of questions. First question is, we can think about, is cash affected in this transaction? Yeah, cash is affected. We're paying cash in order to pay off the accounts payable. So we're paying the liabilities. Therefore, cash needs to go down. Cash has a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. How do we make it go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. So that's a debit, we're gonna credit cash. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna skip a line so it's on a new entry. And then I'm gonna skip another line because I want the cash or the credit to be on the bottom. So we're now in J14, right click and paste one, two, three. Then we're gonna to go to the credit side. So we're in L14 and the credit will be for the cash that we paid of the 240. That's how much we owed in the liabilities. So we're gonna say negative or negative, right, 240,000 to represent the credit. And there we have that. Then we're gonna debit something, of course, and the thing that we are going to debit will be the accounts payable. Why? Because we're paying it off. And we can see that accounts payable has a credit balance in it and we need to make it go down. Therefore, we're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which will be a debit. So we're gonna debit accounts payable. We're gonna right click, gonna copy the accounts payable. We're gonna put that in cell J13, right click and paste it one, two, three. And that will be for the 240. All right, let's post this out and see if it does what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? Well, I think the accounts payable should go down to zero because we paid it off and then the cash will go down by the amount that we paid off for the accounts payable being 240. All right, so let's do that. So accounts payable is the first account. Here's accounts payable. We're gonna post that to the accounts payable in the blue section. So we are in P6. We're gonna say that equals, we're gonna to point to the 240. So we have the credit and then minus the debit will bring the balance down to zero. And now of course we're out of balance. Now we're gonna post the cash on the credit side to the cash here in the entries section. So I'm gonna double click on that, go to the end of it. We can see the other cash account that is in there. We're gonna say plus, and then point to this amount here, which is negative or in brackets for Excel. That's a credit. This is a debit, those are opposites. It's gonna make the cash go down. And that puts us back in balance here. So we can see the same information that we have here. We've got the cash of uh 6425 6425 then the capital counts of these respectively for k c and m and we have those amounts here here so we are uh, tied out with both a uh, trial balance and in terms of the worksheet and now we now we can finally pay off these partners that keep on asking us to pay them off because now we have cash of 6425 and we simply have uh, capital accounts now that add up to 642.5. So now it is safe for us to take that money, pay off the partners, because uh, we're not gonna run into the problem of coming up short because of the sale of the inventory not matching or something like that. Therefore, we can do that first with a worksheet. So if we go to the worksheet over here, we're gonna say, okay, the uh, cash is gonna go completely down. We're gonna pay all of it off. So I'm gonna say negative 642.5 and we're gonna reduce the capital accounts by what is in there. So we owe uh, K the same, 178,000. We owe C, 269, 167. We owe M, 195,333. And we should end up with zeros at the end of the day. Also wanna note that uh, many times when we think of these capital accounts, it gets really easy for us to start thinking that the capital account balance should always be in proportion to the ratios for profit sharing. That's not going to be the case. The, the capital accounts will not generally match the profit sharing because the profit sharing is based on how much should be allocated for profit and loss. However, what's not going to uh, be in that percentage is the amount of draws. So partners do not have to draw money out in accordance with the profit sharing. So some partners may draw out more or less and therefore the uh, capital accounts will not be in relation to the ratio necessarily, most likely not, but the uh, income allocation will be in, in this format. So note that, just be aware of that. That's a common question that comes up. So then we're gonna of course have the 642.5 plus 
the 642.5. Once again, this is this plus a negative number, which makes it go down to zero. And if we'll do that all the way across, it's gonna be the 178 plus this number, which is a negative, making it go down to zero. And obviously if it, if it went up and doubled itself, we know we went the wrong way. So then we're gonna do the same thing here. This equals this number plus this negative number, makes it go down to zero. And then this equals, I'm, gonna, I'm hitting plus instead of equals. That sometimes is a little bit faster if you want to, because if you have a 10 key on the side, plus we'll also do a formula. So you can say this number plus this number and enter. All right, so we're gonna do that same thing in terms of a trial balance. And once again, I tend to prefer the trial balance. I can see what's in the trial balance right now. I've got cash and I've got capital accounts. And we can ask our question, well, what's gonna to happen to cash? Is cash affected? Yeah, we're paying cash. We're gonna pay it all off. We're gonna pay all the cash out to the owners of the um, partnership. So cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go down to zero. How do we make it go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm gonna copy in four, copy that. And I'm gonna to try to put it on the bottom, which is a bit of a guessing game, but I'm gonna say we're gonna skip a line. And then we have three uh, capital accounts that are gonna go on top. So I'm gonna skip it one, two, three more lines. And then I think it should be right here down in J19 in order to put it on the bottom. And once again, putting it on the bottom is just a convention. It doesn't really have to be that way if we put the debit. If we put the credit on top, uh, it really wouldn't matter, but some people it really does, don't like that. And some software, if you're using a software in a school or something and they use some type of software that's gonna automatically grade it, then <laughs> you could get marked off if you do that. But just realize in, in practice, in most accounting software, if you put the, the debit or credit in a different order, does not always, you know, it shouldn't make any, any problem. And if you are in a complicated journal entry that uh, it's gonna be, and you're gonna go back to it at a later time, you may want to put it in whatever order that you would make most sense to you when you go back and audit it. But I'm gonna put this on the bottom, right click and paste it one, two, three. We're gonna credit it by the amount that's in there, which is a credit negative 642.5. And then we're going to allocate that to the partners, K, C, and M, in accordance with what is in there. So I'm not gonna allocate it in accordance to their profit sharing. We're just gonna pay off what is in those accounts. We're not allocating net income in this case. We're paying off the cash. So that, that's there's a difference in there. When we allocated net income, we allocated it based on the income allocation. When we pay off the capital accounts, they, they can draw out whatever they want or whatever the terms are, but theoretically they can draw out, the, you know, the balance that is in their capital account. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to paste that right here in J16, right click and paste it one, two, three. And I'm just going to put in there right down the line. We're going to need debits of 178,000. We're going to need a debit for C of 269, 167. We need a debit for M of this one nine five three 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 all right so now let's see if we are in balance do our debits equal our credits we're going to add up the debits i'm just going to highlight them look at the tax bar down here uh one four two five that's what adds up to the credit one four two five we highlight all of them debits minus the credits add up to zero therefore we are in balance and we could post this out so first we're going to post k's capital account so here's k's capital account here's k here and so there is something in it, therefore we're gonna double click on it. I can see what's in there there. This account, I'm just gonna to add to it. We're gonna to go to the end of it, say plus, and point to this 178. What will happen here? It's gonna go down to zero. Then we're gonna to go to the C's capital account. So here's C's capital account, here's C's capital account. Here's where we're gonna post it in the blue area. There's something in there already. We're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, and then say plus, then point to this, to uh, 69167. That's a debit. This is a credit. Those are opposites. Therefore, it's going to make it go down to zero. Then we are going to do the same thing for M. Here's M here. Here's where we want to post it. There's the posting area. We're going to double click on that. Go to the end. Select plus point to the 195333. That's a debit. This is a credit. Therefore, it's going to go down to zero because they are opposites. Then we just need to post the cash out. So here's cash, here's cash. We're gonna post it in the cash area. So I'm gonna double click on it. We can see a few things in there. And so this is in there, this is in there. We're on the end of it, we're gonna say plus. 
and then point to this 642.5 and enter. Makes the cash go down to zero. So now we have now liquidated the company, taking everything from the trial balance down to zero. Remember the process of the liquid liquidation <laughs> will be that we want to sell the assets represented by just inventory in this simplified example then uh, we want to allocate the gain or loss to the partnership uh, partners in the partnership and then we want to take that cash that we paid that we got from the sale of the assets pay off the liabilities then pay the capital accounts why do we do it in that order so that we don't get into a situation where we pay one particular partner and then realize that the inventory is not worth or whatever assets we have is not worth what we thought it was be worth and then get into a, a sticky situation there.